Kyle, and welcome to Wheels of Fury. Again, disclaimer before we go any further. Okay. So, yeah, I know. Apparently, I thought this was the 90th episode. Foul! And for more extra. This is 94. Yeah, well, this is, yeah, for sure. So, obviously, as a little fuck up, uh, Last week when I did Killer Kyle's video on his channel, check it out. And uh, yeah, there's some good videos out there already. Yeah. You know, so yeah, obviously the 94th episode. It won't be long before 100. 100 yeah, just six off. That's wow. fucking amazing. <laughs> it's like when we started March 4th of last year, which is the anniversary of my. Grandpa's death, and we went from there, you know. And it's like it was pretty cool, you know, just to get to that this point, yeah. And well, yeah, whatever, that's just the way it is, and I think it's awesome. You know, one thing that really makes it interesting, too, is the fact that we have talked about on my channel there last week is. When we first started doing these videos, of course, the very first video we did was uh, a fast lane prediction video. So if you want to know where, how this all started, what the beginnings are, go check out that video. But when we first initially started doing this, we were doing videos every other week, I think. Maybe every two weeks, something like that. And then... As time went on and we got into 2018, we were pretty much doing a video every single week. And because we started doing a video every single week, every single Friday, that's why we ended up at where we are right now so quickly. Yeah, and you know, it's just kind of funny because I probably mentioned this before, but it's almost like... I wanted to, well first I wanted to include Kyle in my videos because I wanted to make something new, new yeah. for my channel and you know take influences from other YWC channels, uh, fucking show, you know, our whole channel central which is yeah. basically what I wanted to discuss wrestling and other topics yeah. with somebody else oh, yeah. and yeah. finally got this far. So it's pretty cool, you know. And who knows where else it'll take us. Yeah, I, I really think up until Matt moved in here two years ago, he really didn't have that extra person to bounce ideas off of and to work off of and somebody that had knowledge of wrestling and other sources of the sports entertainment aspect of things, if you go like UFC, kickboxing, Pride, yeah, Bellator, Bellator, yeah, Japan, Japan, yes, various other things. Yeah, I don't even know when the next fight is. But we should probably cover that. I know we do a lot of pro wrestling shows, and yeah, we talk about mostly WWE. Yeah, and we should also mention a lot more Impact or Ring of Honor oh, shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot where we could cover in the future. Oh, but definitely. Like next week, we're going to talk about top ten top. Whatever, whatever. The top favorite comedians. You yes. Know? And big fan of stand up comedy myself. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, much as ironic. But <laughs> that's next week. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's continue with our installment of Look Back at.
out for a regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> yeah. So, we're gonna talk about the very first NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, Brooklyn. which happened August 22nd, I believe, 2015. And, holy shit, man. Like, boy, how time flies. Well, I see, N NXT started, I believe, in 2010, maybe. 2009, Ooh. 2010. Well, see, here's the thing about it. NXT first came around shortly after FCW closed down. Right, yeah, yeah. FCW was one of WWE's developmental wrestling promotions, you could say. It's almost like you had uh, FCW in Florida. You had Deep South Wrestling and wherever it was. Wherever it was. Ohio Valley Wrestling. In, in, in Ohio. Cleveland or yeah. Cincinnati. Somewhere in the Somewhere, Ohio. Yeah. Actually, if I'm not, I might, if I'm not 100% sure on this. I think it was called Ohio Valley Wrestling, but their main area where they were from was, I think, Louisville? Oh, wow. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit of misinformation. Yeah. Ohio Valley Wrestling in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm sure there is a reason behind the name Ohio Valley Wrestling, but I believe a lot of where they based their shows out of was Louisville. Yeah. We yeah, had Deep Silk, you had OVW, and then FCW. FCW was a long standing developmental wrestling company for WWE. A lot of guys that are on the main roster and that were in NXT came from OVW. Yeah. So, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, I think Tyler Breeze. Yeah, Brad Maddox. Brad Maddox. Maybe Brian Saxton. Or Byron Saxton. Yeah. Uh, AJ Lee. Yeah. Caitlin. But anyways, man, yeah. once FCW shut down, it was like WWE goes, okay, we do go out to different countries, go scouting for to wrestlers, but now that we don't have FCW or over, well, I think OVW is still around, but anyway, now that we don't have FCW and Deep South, and we're not, I don't think they're using F or Ohio Valley Wrestling anymore, we need a place to put these guys to give them exposure to maybe the American audience and have them wrestle and develop before they go on the main roster and that's where NXT came about. Now, yeah. When NXT first started it was the equivalency of like tough enough. Yeah. yeah. Now they you had to run like Guys that were brought in from other wrestling promotions, partnered with pros, and yeah, they would have wrestling matches, but they also would do competitions, and then, I think every week, somebody would get eliminated until you ended up with a winner. That lasted for three years, I'll say. And then, they, at some point, they went, alright, let's fucking do away with the competition shit, and make it a developmental wrestling show. And what's interesting is you know, you watch those shows and I obviously I YouTubed a lot of them. Oh, of course. Most were the fucking diva search, but yeah. it's like, you want to talk about sports entertainment that may have well have been the entertainment portion. But there was no maybe one or two matches, but that's about it. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of sucked a little bit, you know, and I think it's a difference between 
Triple H and Vince McMahon. Because obviously Vince McMahon always will classify himself as the sports entertainment brand. Right. But you got Triple H, who is a professional wrestler, who knows what good professional wrestler would be, whether you agree with it or not. Yeah. So it's like, after this whole thing with the game shows and the competitions and all that shit, which is whatever, you go on, you've got NXT Revival, you've got NXT whatever the fuck. Oh, there's been so many NXT special events come about but that, for this. Yeah, but then you get, like, Dusty Rhodes coming. Yes. And, you know, one of the guys that helped make, yes, the guy that helped make the NXT brand what it is. Yeah, better and small. You know, and so a lot of wrestlers that are in the main roster today have a great dusty for where they are. Exactly. Paige, I'm sure. Bailey, Sasha Banks, The Shield. Yeah. American Alpha. Yeah. Probably the Whites, maybe. Uh, obviously, yes. I remember when I first saw NXT, probably 2014, or whatever, it was exactly, it was refreshing to watch. Oh yeah. Because it was like, a different atmosphere, a setting, and, yes. yeah, it was just, like, it was better, I mean, back then, it was better, you know. Not as good as now, but it was Pretty cool. And even if you look at back at that, the beginning, yeah. back at that whole time frame, but, and when NXT first became the developmental wrestling show and more or less of a competition show, you had Charlotte against Natalia for the NXT Women's Championship. You got Sasha Banks against Bailey in a hell of a match for, again, the NXT Women's Championship. And you also had wrestlers come in from outside of well, WWE and the United States to compete. Yeah. Like Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. Chris like Hero. Chris Hero. Like Kabashi. Kenta Kabashi. Like Undisputed Era. Yeah. Like a Tommaso Ciampa. Tommaso Ciampa. Johnny Gargano. Uh, Roderick Strong. Roderick, yeah. At uh, one point Austin Hero. And several others. You also had Reggie Steamboat, which I yes. think that I don't even know what happened to him. Leo Kruger, which unfortunately turned into Adam Rose, Bonus Clay, a lot of these guys definitely, it's weird, I don't know, I can't fucking, yeah. but anyways, enough of our blabbering, let's get out of the main topic is, yep, so anyways, we start off with this match, and this was a treat, to say the least, you got Jushin Thunder Liger, yes, legendary Jushin Thunder Liger versus Tyler Breeze. Oh, when I found out they got Liger, it was like, holy oh, shit. Like, here's a guy that is legendary in Japan, <laughs> maybe Mexico, WCW, ECW. probably ECW, I don't know. I think so, he wrestled. Yeah, I think he wrestled in... ECW, yeah. and had a feud with uh, Rey Mysterio. Yeah, that's right. So to see this guy come in, and it was just like, and it was only for a short time, unfortunately, but it was pretty cool. They hyped him up and everything. Oh yeah. But this was a good match. I mean, you look at Tyler Breeze that just came in and Another CW guy that was very impressive and had that whole model 
tape thing yeah. with the camera. And the cell phone and the selfie stick. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. But also, you know, the athleticism with yeah. the Chiefs here in Thunder Liger. Obviously, he won. Yes. So, I mean, that, that was pretty cool to see that. And you know, with Liger being 50, 50, Four fifty-five somewhere in yeah. there, and to still be able to go at that pace, at that speed, with that agility, is so spectacular. Yeah. And even like having him do a few matches in Ring of Honor, oh yeah, is That's right. pretty cool to see. Now this. Probably will be Blagger's first ever appearance in WWE ever. Yeah. And even if it, I'm sure, probably his only. Hey, something to put on your resume. Hey, I got to wrestle in WWE. Yeah, and it's a shame we didn't get to see him. Um, or after Yeah, because you had <laughs> yeah. Mysterio and you had Ultimo Dragon and, and so on and so forth. Oh yeah. So it would have been pretty cool to see Liger in that mix. Yeah. But anyhow. Could you even imagine being in Tyler Breeze's position and be like, holy shit, I got to fucking wrestle Juice of Thunder Liger. And like I said, it would be an absolute honor, you know. Oh, no kidding. But So I'm gonna go down now to the Var villains who took on Blake and Murphy. Murphy. They didn't really have a, a good thing, but Buddy Murphy and Wesley Blake. Yes, and this of course, was for the uh, NXT tag titles. Yes, and you know it's kind of funny. And yes, I still have a crush on Alexa Bliss. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you look at it this way, and she did wrestle on NXT. I yes, don't remember seeing a match but her best moments were managing Blake and Murphy. Obviously she is engaged to Buddy Murphy. Yes. And uh, Wesley Blake which don't really know what happened to him. Yeah I know. But obviously Buddy is now on 205. Yes. I did see him in February when he was on NXT yes. which was fucking awesome. Yeah. You have these two individuals. Then you got the Bob villains in English and Simon Gotch. And the you know, right idea to have like the 1950s or earlier. Earlier 1920 type. Yeah, the 1920s, 1930s type thing. Yeah. Vaudeville. And you have these two individuals that. I mean, we're really awesome in their own way. And oh, yeah. It's too bad that things didn't work out the way they did, and Simon is now elsewhere in the independent circuit as yeah. Simon Grant. Yeah. So. Yeah. And of course, to mention also, yeah, with the Vaughn Village was Blue Pants. Yes, that's right. I forgot about Blue Pants. I saw her name somewhere a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. I, don't know. I forgot all about the pants. Well, you kind of would because she had a fairly good go in NXT. Yeah. But nothing long enough to go, oh, I. Like, you remember her, but. I think NXT and, you know, Triple H and whatever could have done a lot more with her. They just dropped the ball essentially. And the thing with Alexa Bliss is before she was with Blake and Murphy she had the homage to her athletic background. Yeah. She had like the cheerleading outfit with the frilly puffy tutu and sparkles and yeah the sparkles and you know the hair and the pigtails and her finisher was called the Sparkle Splash. 
know, she did fairly well for herself, but it didn't really seem like she was gaining a whole lot of momentum. And then she heel turns, joins Blake and Murphy, and boom, she skyrockets to the top. Yeah. You know, and to think she's both Raw and SmackDown women's champion. And it's kind of crazy to think about her. Yeah, she's over. She's about five feet, but it's also like, if Rey Mysterio can wrestle, why can't she wrestle? So, I, I don't know, it just, it's kind of interesting how that works. And yeah. it helps that she's double jointed, so. No kidding. I mean, there's a lot of cool shit that goes on here. But yeah, the Bob Villains are the new tag team champions. And again, you know, I did see them, yeah, it was two years ago, when they came here for the first SmackDown show. Which was pretty cool to see that. And, yeah, I mean, it's too bad that they split up, but yeah. even Blake and Murphy, I, you know. Two if, teams that unfortunately went separate ways, and one of the members of the teams have still remained relevant, and the other two members of the team have revert virtually and essentially faded from existence. And it's like the Marty Gennetti of the show, Michael, yeah. something. Yeah. So we go on now to Apollo Crews versus Ty Dillinger. And I gotta clear something up. I probably. Well, you saw my video. Yes. I gotta clear something up. I thought Ty Dillinger won. It was actually Shop Benjamin. I saw the sharpshooter. And, you know. After that, Blake did. I might have, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I saw the match. I don't know why I fucking missed that. But I I remember after that, after I fucked that up. Oh yeah, it was Shelton Benjamin. So yeah, it was like certain shooter gets applied, and then something happens, and Shelton Benjamin ends up winning. Yeah, so that's my. Shit. So, carry on. Yeah. And this is Apollo Crews, who I'm not quite sure. For some reason, back then, I thought he was on Men of Honor. I think Moose came in as the other point, actually. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. So, well, anyways, I mean, Apollo Crews definitely somebody that needs a big push. I mean, I don't know how to... I don't know, I just think that there's a guy that definitely needs a big push. He's got the attitude, he's got the look, and he fits in really well with Titus Worldwide, right? Yeah. And he got Ty Dellinger that, you know... Lately has become our juice. My, uh, puppy and following him around trying to keep him out of shit, out of trouble. Because for some reason, our truth thinks, oh, I gotta face Carmella in a match. Oh and it's like, dude, what are you doing? I fucking forgot about that. Oh my god. It's like, uh, what are you doing with our truth, really? But yeah, I guess you gotta do something stupid with Ty Dollinger. But yeah, this was a good match, too. Yeah. And uh, Paul Cruz won, which we don't get used to that much anymore. Yeah. It would be nice if they put the Intercontinental title on it. You know, or something. Give them something, because... Well, it seemed to be that they thought, hey, okay, we've got this young guy coming to the, on the main roster from NXT. You know, have let him have some matches. And, of course, he did amazing. But they went, okay, what can we do to give Apollo a little extra momentum to get him maybe to a title? And they went, oh, hey, we're not doing anything with Titus right now. With, of course, he was coming off a whole fucking debacle shit show with him and Darren Young. Oh, yeah. 
So they're like, hey, let's put these two together. Titus is a veteran. He's well, been around for a while. He did that, but he also did the Slater Gator thing. Right. Oh, yeah, that too. Well, anyways, let's put Apollo yeah. with Titus and see where it goes. And I mean, the pairing has worked really well, but hello, what have you done for me lately? Pretty much. I gotta put down a book in there because you gotta have cream in that coffee. Yeah. But you gotta look at these two guys. Either uh, tag team titles or. I don't know. I don't know how the answer is. In the infamous words of Matt, shit, get off the fucking pot. There you go. I trained you win myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Apollo Cruz won this match. And again, I think that Ty Dillinger is still one of the best today. Hopefully they'll give him a title shot of whatever. Yeah. He's on SmackDown, I think, so... Yeah. Uh, U.S. title, probably. Yeah, put that on like, another comedian, I don't give a fuck. So, now we go on down to Samoa Joe and Baron Corbin. And I look at those two guys, and it's like, two big guys, and... Yeah, Baron Corbin really was the shit. And you look at Samoa Joe, and he's a veteran in all other companies. And you think, okay, this is pretty cool. And now, you look at fucking today! And what's Baron Corbin doing? What's hey. Samoa Joe doing? Samoa Joe's going after the WWE Championship and Barrett Corbin's Stephanie McMahon's laptop. Yeah, but, well, you know, fucking, okay, you got one guy who is being a fucking stalker. Well, Wendy Styles, Styles, really? Yeah. We can't say fucking Jones or whatever the fuck his last name is. Really? And then you go, you gotta go to fucking... Corbin. Fucking, no, some, yeah, uh, Barrett Corbin. You got a shave and say, I got a photo in a suit. Again, let's hide those tattoos, everybody. Oh, we gotta have them sing stupid fucking songs with fucking Elias. Oh, yeah. And then we gotta have him have a doghouse for Finn Balor. And then we gotta put him in a match with Finn Balor. Not one match, which was probably good enough. We gotta put him in another match for some fucking reason. And now, he's taking off a Kurt Angle's job, which is, I don't know, uh, stupid. very fucking stupid. And then, you got fucking Samoa Joe that kicks a lot of ass, but what do you do? You say, well, we're gonna make him, you know, say, oh, daddy's never coming home. I'm gonna be your daddy. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Because you took two guys that are fully capable, and you fucked up their character. Well, I didn't realize there was gonna be a rant in this video. Alrighty then, yeah. So, Joe wins by technical submission. This was a fairly good match. I mean, like I said, two big guys that are both physical, both hard hitting, both can go in the ring. And yeah, Joe kind of showed he can take out a guy that's slimmer but taller than him. Sure. And this is the point too where Joe uses the muscle buster, which you know, unfortunately he doesn't use anymore because he Poor Tyson kid. Yeah. And he you knows it's just another one of those freak out. Yeah, you look at you know, it could have been much worse. True. Uh, you know Very true. Owen Hart or Draws worse. Yeah. Well don't even go away with Owen Hart, but I mean definitely draws worse. Yes, you know, and it's too bad, but like, like it says, it's not ballet, it's, <laughs> it's, oh, it's professional wrestling. Yep. So, I mean, you look at that, and, you know, I'm sure Joe didn't mean to do it. I no. Know. I think that it just happens, and whatever. Yeah, it could be one of those things where the landing went, the landing was wrong, and landing didn't go the way it was supposed to, Tyson didn't land flat or something, who knows, but yeah. 
Yeah, so and I ended up being the way it went and well another career cut short, unfortunately. Yes. And I mean yeah, Tyson is still alive, he's still healthy enough, I guess. And just shit happens. Yeah. yeah. But Samoa Joe won, yeah, of course. And yeah, it's pretty interesting, you know. And he uh, look at well, you know, TNA guys going over to NXT. Here you got Samoa Joe. You get Bobby Roode the next year. Yeah. You have a lost in areas, whatever. AJ uh, Styles before that. Oh, well, AJ Styles was actually got NXT. He just went right to the. No, but what I mean, as far as like talking about guys right, right, from yeah. TNA come to WWE. Yes, that is true. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty cool to see that, you know, and vice versa, like, yeah. fucking a lot of guys are going to TNA, you know, Rick Swan. Uh, that's all I know right now, there's a... Uh, Aries, after he left WWE, yeah. went on the Indies for a while, he's back in TNA, and he's the world champion right now. Right, yes, you also have Rick Swan, and he's not pretending to be a St. Bernard. Oh, yeah. That guy gets hit. Anyways. So now we go on to you. A match that I had mentioned earlier in our opener of the video. Bailey and Sasha Banks for the NXT Women's Championship. You know, this match is, was the match of the night. Oh, fuck yeah. They hyped it up and then fucking delivered. You have to understand that this is where the women's movement in WWE carried on. You have those two to thank for that because that was the first time, and well, my knowledge, a women's Iron Man match. Yes. Iron Woman match, I guess. I mean, shit, they put each other through hell. Oh, they brutalized each other. Yeah, you know, and it's like. I'm not sure how many falls there were, but this was fucking awesome. And it's like I think what it was is, and I, if I remember correctly, it ended up as a tie, and within the last few seconds before time ran out, Bailey was able to get a submission on Sasha Banks. And yeah. Her hit her with a belly to belly and hit her or something like that. Yeah. And we have the, the women wrestlers come out and all, all the wrestlers came out and they did the standing ovation. And it was, they, all, they both got a nice bouquet of roses. Yeah, yeah, it was very cool. And I mean, to think, you beat the living piss out of each other oh, yeah. for like 30 minutes and then lost the matches are like, hey, let's be friends, let's hug. Oh yeah, see this is... What I'm trying to understand too, because when I was watching a documentary for, I think it was the Women Royal Rumble. Yes. And so you see backstage area, Sasha Banks, Tish Russell, and she's watching the women's match there. And I'm going, I know if I were you, I'd probably be lying on the couch or, you know, tending to my fucking injuries. You're standing there. Like, nothing fucking happened. Yeah, really, eh? You know? I mean, it's like, women are fucking tough. Oh, God, yeah. And so, that's definitely... I mean, hell, look at fucking Nikki Cross and Oscar with that last woman standing. Oh, my God. God. You got that match, you got... Them falling off that ladder through the damn announce tube. Fucking... Jeez. Charlotte and Sasha Banks falls count anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's not good, you know, and Triple H has it right. They gotta showcase these women somehow. Oh yeah. And that will make them look like legit badass motherfuckers, and that's exactly what's going on right now. You know, we don't Trish, they affected that shit. Oh yeah. Majority of all those women, but also, you know, these, well, these women now are perfected, you know. 
like you got the Omeyang Classic. Yes. Which starts next week. Right. And so I got that, and it's like, holy shit. You know, these my men are definitely going to be the next, you know, generation, just like last year. Oh, yeah. You know, you got Shayna Baszler, and you got Kyrie Shane. Yep. Yeah. Lacey Evans, and all those women. Bianca yeah, Belli. Yes. Uh, Vanessa Bowen. Imagine within the next year they get called up to the main roster. I'm afraid of great. what they're gonna do to those women. Yeah. However, it's still up in the air. So yeah, this match definitely a match of the night. You could easily see that what Bailey and Sasha Banks did for NXT and the NXT women's division is what Trish and Lita did for the main roster at the main roster from the women's division. And then, yes, oh yeah, for sure. But you also talk about making it feel like a WrestleMania moment. Oh yeah. Because you have Rick. the entrance, you know, Sasha Banks coming out in a Mercedes Benz or whatever it was. Oh, her name's Mercedes, whatever. Yeah. So then Bailey comes out and then she's got the, the floaty car lot things there. Yeah. So, Black grip and flight will arm flailing to a Yeah. Which is a big mouthful. So there, you know, it starts off great and it ends great. And you think, you know, who can follow that shit? Well, now they're, you know, I look back now, they're Jake. They're Jake team, I guess. Yeah. You know, they went through some bullshit for a while and won't even go there. Yes. They already did a thing. Yes. So. I mean, yeah, there's nothing more I can say about that. Yeah. Talk about are you gonna top Bailey and Sasha Banks? Well, let's talk about the main event of the evening. Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens for the NXT Championship in a ladder match. You know, you look at these two individuals. You got Finn Balor, who came in from New Japan as Prince Devin. And he comes in and then you've got Kevin Owens, who was just finishing Ring of Honor, going up against Steve Carino in his last match as Kevin Steen, and he comes over to NXT, and he just, it's amazing. It's amazing to see the first Ring of Honor alumni come over to NXT. So this match was awesome, too. A ladder match for the NXT title. I it did not disappoint. No, like, no, you know there was a lot of cool shit that happened. We gotta watch this over again, I'm sure. But well, we'll find time. Oh yeah, I mean this was fucking cool. I can't say nothing about it. Yeah, yeah. Finn Balor won, obviously. Yep. But yeah, these two put each other through hell. And if you want to look at great ladder matches with Kevin Steen. Gotta go to Ring of Honor. Yeah. You gotta watch him and El Generico. Oh yeah. Or uh, him. I I don't know if it was. I, I know he wrestled Jay Lethal for a bit, but yeah. I'm not sure if they had a lot of more. But a lot of good ladder matches with him, anyways. Yeah. So yeah, I think that those two individuals, of course, Finn is on Raw. You have Kevin Owens. Well, he's on Raw now, I guess. Too. You know, hopefully they'll get a title shot at some point. Yeah. You know, they're just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, yeah, Kevin Steen and from Gold Abbott. Yes. But, you know, it's kind of interesting to me to see how far all these individuals have come. And it makes me, it, it makes me feel like, yeah, we'll find out what happens in the future. Because oh, you yeah. still have... All these wrestlers on NXT that are still going to probably eventually come over. Like, you've got Teaming of Honor, I mean, Disputed Era. You've got these guys. Who knows what they're going to do with them? You've got Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano. I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. Candice LeRae. All those wrestlers over there. But you look at these individuals. 
evolved and went somewhere else. You know, you already have the shield at WWE. You've got Biggie and all those guys. Yeah. It's very interesting to see how these individuals came into the realm. And now it'll be exciting to see what happens with other NXT guys. Oh well, yeah, for sure. Look at us. But yes, very much so. This was a good show, you know. I think that at the time, I don't well, I know if I got the WWE Network. Yes, I think that I watched it mostly from my brother's laptop. Yeah, but I can see that. Yeah, so it was a pretty good show, and I think that yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I just think that hopefully. We'll see what happens with the other NXT roster to see what happens when they move to the main roster. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And of course, you got to the fact that right now you've got Kyle O'Reilly and Roger Strong as the tag champs, Tommaso Ciampa as the NXT champion, you got Ricochet as oh, yeah. the North American champion, and you've got Kyrie Sane as the NXT Women's Champion, so they're rocking and rolling. Yeah. Doing well, so we'll see as time goes on what will happen. Can't wait. And of course, it'll be interesting to see what goes on with this year's Bay Young Classic. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of very interesting wrestlers. You've got. You know, Caitlin's back, Celeste yes. Bonin, you've got Maya Yim, I think she's back. Maya Yim, you've Madison got... Madison Rain or Ashley Rain. Ashley Rain, you've got, uh, Karen Q. Karen, yes. Vanessa Craven. Yes, Vanessa fucking Craven. Represent. Yeah. You've got Mercedes. Martinez. Martinez. You have... Tony Storm, Sienna, Sienna, oh, yeah, Ashley, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Man, let's pick, let's take these random wrestlers and let's name them Ashley. Yeah, really. So, but it's it's getting to look like a good roster. And oh, they, absolutely. You know, they just set up matches recently, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, you got two Canadian women, you got the three Japanese women, I think. Yes, or so. You know, a Chinese woman. You know, it, it'll be fun. You know, I mean, I can't wait to see. Obviously, last year was pretty cool. Yes. So it'll be the fun to see what happens, and that's pretty much all I can say about that. Yeah. So this has been a fun episode of Mills Fury, and yeah, I mean, damn, what the fuck up? Ninety-four episodes, whatever. Okay. Next week we're gonna talk about our favorite comedians. Yes. So that should be interesting. Like I said, I've always enjoyed watching stand up comedy. So yes. It'll be fun to see what happens there. Yeah. Who Matt has on his list? Who I have on mine? Well, I know who I have on mine. I just did mine earlier today. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, ours could be similar. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure we'll have a few some of their ones on there. Yeah, it'll be fun. You know, I think that, you know, it'll be fun for sure. Hey. Anyway, so for me and Matt, this is Killer Kyle. And again, watch his channel. Yep. You know, subscribe. It'll be fun. Yep. Like, subscribe, share, all those fun things. Yep. Same with this channel. This. Same with Green Man's World. Yes. You know, subscribe, like, favorite, whatever the fuck. I don't yeah. You know, it's just one of those things where I keep saying, sending questions. I know there's people that watch my videos. It's just, you know, we kind of want to do a Q&A video. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, as long as it's, if you guys send in your questions, we'll do it. You just got to send in your questions. Whether it be to myself on Twitter, at KillerKyle, slash Kyle, at Metalhead674, 
on my well, on a video on my channel, on a video on Matt's channel, on one of these episodes of Real Fury, doesn't really matter. Send in your questions, we'll answer them. Oh, Nothing's off limits. Oh yeah, I mean you know how it goes. It's just the way I Anyways, uh, yeah, well, uh, talk to you next week.